Help! SRS! Help! SRS! Hey there, guys. Joe Simons. Like diamonds. Salt drunk here. You're wondering, Joe, have you lost your mind? It's SOS. No, it's not. It's SRS, and I truly do need your help, and it's going to take less than 60 seconds. Here's the deal. We've been approached multiple times by these advertisers who want to advertise on our podcast. We've said no to all of them because here's what they want to do. They told us on a 30 to 40 minute show, they want to put nine advertisements. That means like every few minutes it is going to abruptly stop and you're gonna have to sit through a dumb advertisement. We do not want you to put you through that. It's it's a bad user experience. We're here to impact as many people as possible. So instead of us taking advertising money, all we ask in return is you do this one thing. It's gonna take 60 seconds. It's the SRS. It's subscribe. That takes literally one second. If you're on iTunes, pause it right now. You can hit subscribe. If you're on Stitcher, same thing. So subscribe is number one. R is review. Just take a few seconds and review this podcast. That's the number one way that Apple shares and recommends this to as many people as possible. It helps us make a massive impact and make sure that we never have to put ads on here. And the other one is to share it with anyone you think might love this message. So SRS, subscribe, review, and share. It would mean the world to us and it helps get this message out there and this podcast out to as many people as possible and keeps it completely ad free. So here is the message in the podcast for today. Hope you enjoy it. And if you can, please, 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 SRS, help, subscribe, review, and share. Thank you guys. Love you. Talk to you soon. Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Snook on. Snook on. Doing some beach fishing. Yep, troll mutter died. We were near the beach, so we said we might as well do a little beach fishing. It's the second one Lukey's got there. Power Prawn might be the winner, winner chicken dinner. Yeah, I've got the uh, the Power Prawn Junior on, and these snook have just been loving this thing. It's a little eight ounce jig head. Let me get this guy out of here real quick. All right, come on there, little buddy. Ooh. Ooh. Small little fella. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful snook there. Get the light on him. It's that little Power Prawn Junior right there on the, the tip of his mouth. You can see he's been on the beach. This nice, just white looking snook. Let's get this guy off and let's get some more. But a whole lot of fun. So we should be able to get some bigger ones, but this is at least a, a good start. Let him go. And what I'm using, these, these fish are pretty smart and we have really, really clear water. So I went down to five pound braid, right? There's no structure out here. They're not good. I can catch it over slot snook with this, no problem. There's not any structure. It's really about, about not spooking the fish. And then I have a 12 pound mono leader. And then I have a, a 20 pound tippet right there at the end. And you see now that 20 pound just got compromised. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to redo the tippet but uh, that's just uh, what I found to be the, the best producer of snook. And this is all mono. I don't like fluoro because snook will, will rub right through it. So just regular mono gets the job done. It's just a matter about keeping it light. So I'll go retie and let Joe, let Joe take it over from there. I got to retie. What happened? It Little is, guy got you? I, I'm, I'm out of my little bite tippet. And I might have to go uh, to a power prom myself after seeing you oh. not get a couple. I might have two extras in my pocket. Oh! But yeah, the big thing about this beach fishing is, especially early in the morning, the sun's just starting to come up and you have to wash your shadow. Most of these snook are gonna be patrolling right on the edge. And if, I don't know if you can see the shadow in, in, uh, in the camera or not, but our shadows are going like six feet onto the water. So as we're going, we're gonna be traveling this way. As we're going this way, there's pretty much zero chance that we're gonna catch anything behind our shadow. Because as our shadow goes across, you know, these snook, they're not smart, but they're also not stupid. You know, any kind of big, big shadow that's bigger than them, it's gonna spook them off. So they don't know, really know what we are in most cases, but they just see something big there and they do not want to be part so of it. So I guess begs the question, why are we walking this way when our shadows are going that way versus going that way where we're never spooking anything? 
because there's a nice trough right here. <laughs> Technically, we should be going that way, but this is a, this is a nice little trough, and these, these snook are holding, at least lately, they've been holding inside the trough. And uh, yeah, our trolling motor, we were, originally we were gonna take the trolling motor around, but uh, the trolling motor decided to stop working on us. So now we're on, we're on plan B. But in many cases, oh, fishing oh. from shore. Oh, Joe just had one. Nailed it right when it hit the water. Yeah, in many cases, fishing from shore is the best way to do it. Because the boat, you know, although our shadow kind of spooks fish. There we go. You know, a big old boat, there we are. Oh. A big old boat will really spook them. You see how close that was to the edge? Yeah, I'm gonna get them off the beach. Jeez. So yeah, most of these fish, I <laughs> <laughs> snook doesn't like the water. Just, just get them out in the, in the water, Joe. He does not want to go to the water. Yeah, most of these fish are gonna be right, like within three feet of the, of the, uh, of the shoreline. Them, and so a lot of people do it themselves yeah. an injustice. Quick release. By, yeah, by actually getting in the water. I usually stay like 10 feet off the water and cast right along the right along the edge. That's where most of the action is. <laughs> so the rest of the little guy there. Yeah, he wasn't playing around. So literally, as soon as it hit, it ran up on the beach. I did not do that because uh, it was caught within two to three. I mean, it was in inches of water. And I think that's what so many people miss. Right, and we did. Remember when we grew up beach fishing? Oh, yeah. We'd go out there to our nipples, thinking that all the, you know, we want to get as far as, as possible. And in many cases, these fish are just cruising. They're doing the same thing these birds are doing up here. They're trying to find the easy meal in inches of water. Yeah, there's a lot of whiting. There's a lot of small bait fish coming up on the shorelines and even sand fleas and stuff. They'll eat a little bit of everything. But uh, yeah, most, most of the action will be right up on the shoreline. So I'm almost back in action. I'm doing a blood knot, in case you're wondering about the bite tip, we've had questions coming on that. So it's a line to line a blood knot. So that's the 12 pound mono down to the 20 pound mono. And then we're gonna be, give ourselves like a 10 inch, 10 inch bite tip it, and we'll be good to go. And many times too with these, these beach nook, as, as Luke showed in his, his fish, they're, they're a really light color. And I've seen people like, you know, they think it's going to be really dark in terms of, you know, seeing the fish go by. And many times you don't see them until they're close, right? It's, they're, it's a, they're, they're blending in just like they, they're, they're meant to. Yeah. Uh, really, really interesting with these uh, really, really light beach nuts. So, so far, Power Prawn 2, Slam Shady 1. Tough to go wrong with the power prong on the beach, dude. Yeah, for the bigger ones, what I found is that, the, yeah, the, uh, the paddle tails obviously work. I still love them, but when the water's clear like this, the power prongs usually do the better job of fooling the bigger fish. Although the one I caught was a little dink, the first one was, was a lot, lot better size. But it uh, seems like the, the lower vibration, like a good darting motion, does the best when the water's really clear like this. All right, so I'm ready, ready for action. Loop knot, 20 pound tippet, about 10 inches, 12 pound, down to the five pound braid. Gets the job done. All right, let's do this. We usually do a little hopscotch, so we'll go, I'll go ahead for a little bit. Whoever's up front is probably gonna catch the most fish. But, uh, so we'll just kind of hopscotch it and, uh, and see how, how these lures do. I'm curious to see how the, the Slam Shady does versus the Power Prom. We got birds diving up there. Yeah. Look at all that bird action. And we got a point way up there. Otherwise, looking down the beach for the most part, it looks kind of the same. There's a little trough right here. And so this is not some honey hole that we have. We uh, just parked the boat in the middle. And so this trough over here looks a little bit better, a little bit more defined. So far, there's been a few in here. You guys haven't taken all Bama Beach Bumps Beach Fishing Mastery Course. Fantastic. Luke's on again. Look at that, dude. Oh, just, that was. Uh, I just jumped off. That was so shallow. I'm going to go right behind you. Yeah, it was, it was literally like three feet from shore. Snook are wrecking my leader. 
Snooker aggressive, dude. Yeah. See if there's any more so right see, here. When I, was, when I was casting, I'm literally 10 feet from shore. That's usually the best way to do it. What are you doing retrieval wise? Just a slow, just a slow little, uh, little dart. Yeah, you have that Bama Beach Bump course. Really, really fantastic. And as Luke talked about earlier on the tackle, you know, and obviously it's gonna depend on where you are and what you're, what you're targeting, but we're using the same rod and reel, same equipment for the most part that we use going after snook and reds on the, on the flats. Yeah, I was, I was tempted fate there, that snook, that snook uh, got some, some rubbing on the line and this is light tackle and there are pretty high odds of getting some bigger fish doing this too so i'm going to go ahead and just play it safe three high it's tempting to to keep casting but it's just not worth it if you hook into a you know a giant snook hey uh some kind of unrelated but for you podcast listeners we did a podcast gosh it's been a month or so now about these deep trawling these nets and um we we won uh if you can believe it uh noah i think after all that feedback from uh from so many recreational anglers and, and really just people concerned about taking trawling that close to this really really important reef um they turned down that uh that amendment to let these rock shrimp trawlers get back in there uh fight's not over but I uh, just wanted to share that's fantastic news that uh, Noah did, or at least the people who were voting, uh, did the right thing. It wasn't a 100% unanimous win, but it was a win. So uh, really, really stoked about that. I know uh, Dr. Edie there, uh, you know, they spent a lot of time and energy fighting stuff like that, and they were, they were obviously really stoked, as, as we all should be. Um, it was interesting if you read the comments on that original podcast and people get heated up. Now see, Luke's up way in front of me, spooking all the fish. I got no chance back here. So Joel, we're going to keep moving up. At some point we'll just start walking backwards again and hit those areas. Are you getting any weeds at all, Luke? Not much. Yeah, there's some some weeds right on the shoreline, but by the time you get them, it's pretty much it's pretty much a done cast. No one else out fishing today. We got two uh, turtle lovers, I believe, up ahead. All these little turtle nests. I think they're coming by and checking on them. What do those little signs say? The names of the turtles. How do you know so much about turtle nests, Joel? Either you're a turtle nest fan, fan or a poacher, one of the two. Oh, okay. Who gets to name them? Hmm. I wonder, oh, those, so those are the people who probably sponsor it then. Yeah, I thought you were talking about they named the turtles. I was like, man, that's uh, <laughs> Trey and Joan, Trey and Jane Kennedy. My eyesight's correct. That's cool. Thank you guys. So a little bit further up, about a hundred yards up, I'm seeing a, like a, a darker shadow. Yes, yes. My hope is that it's a school of snook. But long story short, when you're when you're doing this type of fishing, always look for any sort of anomalies and colorations. And it's not gonna be like, it's not gonna be a black snook on sand. It's gonna be a light colored snook. But they, they will stick out a little bit as long as you gotta kinda get used to looking for any sort of anomalies. So I have a feeling that we're gonna get into some more fish here in the next the next bit. Oh, there we are. Oh, Luke's on our right. Oh, I think I'm I think I might be in your line. Oh, that's nope, not I think I'm out now. So yeah, we got this one now, but yeah, up a little bit way so you can go around me. I think there's gonna be a lot more right up there. This one's a little bit bigger than the other one, but yeah, still I see not that. A giant. I see that dark area up there. 
All right, come on, baby. Power Prana is whooping the Slam Shady today. Yeah, it's a lot of fun on this light tackle too. Again, 10 pound, or sorry, five pound braid, a little thousand size, whoa, little thousand size reel. Unlike Joe, I try to keep the snook off the sand. <laughs> I, I did as well, the snook did it on himself. <laughs> Oh, come on. There we are. Again, like another hook set is just, these jig heads are just so nice. They, they, they ride vertical and it gets them in the top, right in the, called right in the button almost every time. Really liking these jig heads. There we are. Let's see if that one, oh, that one did mess up my line. So I'm ready for action. I don't have to retie it. Perfect. Let's get another one. Yeah, I think that is, I think that is going to be a school of snook. It's Joe, Joe almost is able to cast to it. It's a little dark, a little dark section. It's a very, very good sign. Yeah, I'm not there yet, but next cast. I don't want to bypass anything that might be right here. But there's certainly something over there. Yeah. Even if that's not all snook, it's something, it's either grass or something on the bottom that'll usually attract some snook to hold by it. We'll know on this cast if you don't, right. you don't catch something. It might not be snook or they might just be under the power prong. We'll see. Oh, really? <laughs> what leader do you have? I got 30. Oh, that's not gonna help your chances. It's gonna help my chances of landing the big one. I'll let you catch all the dinks you want. So yeah, Joe has 30 pound, uh, 30 pound leader and that is, it's gonna totally diminish his strike, especially once the sun starts coming up. If not already. Oh, really? Yeah, he's in the money spot though. I think that is weeds now looking at it, but there yeah. should be some snook holding by it. Yeah, it's always a tough call, you know. I'm sitting here not carrying anything else with me and I don't want to be retying like you all the time, so I'll take a chance. I go 30. Oh, what snook just struck. I just saw it out there. Yeah, another 100 yards. It's feeding on bait up there, Joel. Yep. I don't know. Hit right on the shoreline. Don't go too fast, though. There's, there's going to be some fish in this dark stuff. There has to be. Looks too good to not hold any. So as far as the formation, if you're using two people like this, it's obviously easier with just one person. That way you can just kind of go up the beach like Joe's doing. So the first person should stay further up to keep that shadow away. And then the guy behind, knowing that these fish are all already spooked, now I can just shoot it straight down the edge and, and target, target these shallower water fish. But yeah, being up for, oh, oh, there we are. Dang. Nice, right, right on the dark stuff. Ooh, there we are. This is a little bit bigger one. Whoa, hello. Oh, wishing you had 30 pounds <laughs> backing on now, huh? Or are you wishing you had 20 and you're actually hooked up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Yeah, it's hooked deep too. I can feel my line rubbing. Yeah, this sensitive rod, I can literally feel my line rubbing on its on its mouth. This is one of the uh, the custom rods that we're uh, doing with mud hole here. Oh, where is it? Let's see. There we are. Yeah, still not a giant one, but it's it's respectable. It's bigger than the other ones. And I just lighten the drag. I can still feel that line rubbing. It is not good. So every time that snook is shaking his head, that's just rubbing more and more line. And so I need to put less and less pressure on it.
Yeah, I can't see the lure, so it's it's in there pretty good. All right. Got him. Check that out. So that, nice. that I, could, I could literally feel that line rubbing. A sensitive rod, you can feel when it's doing that. And had I put too much pressure, it would have uh, it would have rubbed right through. That's a little bit bigger. There's certainly big ones out there, but that was a, a ton of fun on five pound line. Really, really fun. Power Prawn Junior is All right. getting the job done. Oh. So now that is what you call a close call right there. That line is all messed up. So that really that whole tippet, right? In this case, I, it was down to about six inches and it went up about four inches onto it. So when you're using this light line like that, you make sure you have a tip that's at least six inches because uh, again, if that was a bigger snook, it could easily, it could easily rub, you know, six, six plus inches up there. So. All right, give me a power prawn junior. I'm going to uh, switch uh, over and then we'll know if it's the, the line or not. So you have two options. Hmm. You got, oh, you don't have jig heads. I do have one jig head too. So you've got, I actually don't have the, I don't have the football jig head. What do you got? I just, I just got the quarter ounce. Okay. I got a, I got a little trout eye. So you can do the slam shady or the natural. I can just stick with my normal jig head. And then there's, that's the jig that I have. So we're going, we're Look going bare bones here. This is what, this is what brothers do. Can you guys see how far offset that is? <laughs> and, and rust, it's like it's bent. Dude, okay, take I'll, that I'll thing back. back. Oh, Jeez, back. I don't even know why I cut I'll, off to begin with. I'll hold on to my power fronts too. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So yeah, we, uh, this wasn't a planned trip, so we don't have all of our stuff. I might oh, we do, it's just back there in the boat. I might have lost my other line. <laughs> Dude, that's yeah, the, I might be out of commission. That's the jankiest jig hit I've ever seen. Yeah, I think, I, oh, nope, we do have the line. So I have my last bit of tippet. All right. I was gonna say, you could have borrowed some of mine. You've had two gloves this entire time? <laughs> yeah, from the Rockies. <laughs> All right. All right, so give me a, I do want a shrimp though. All right. Boogie. Take off Shady, put him in the pocket. It's oh, always, always hold on. Always nice to be ready for action. Do your soft plastics. Or do you want, uh, I got a, a slam Shady too if you want to try that. I'll take this one. So quick, quick retie here. This, this is kind of frustrating where you have to keep retying with these with these short tippets, but it's worth it to actually be getting the action. And over time, these knots get quicker and quicker to tie. Right. There's the blood knot, and now we'll do the non-slip loop to the lure. Got it sitting on my shorts. Jig head's way too big for this little guy. Yeah, there's definitely gonna be more fish up there. This is a, such a night. We've got a trough and some, some dark stuff on the bottom. That's just a recipe for some, for some snook. So this will be an interesting test. So now Joe has the same lure. It's just he has much thicker line than I do. And I got a massive jig head. Which one do you have? Quarter ounce, it's just a little bit too big oh, for yeah, this. Yeah, it might be a little bit too heavy, but we'll see. It'll still work. And I don't have any Dr. Juice. Oh, no Dr. Juice. You got juice? You know it. All right, so now mine, again, same thing. We got that bite tippet ready for action. All nice and clean. This is when I hope I hook into the big one. All right, give me some of that juice, dude. Oh, I don't have it on me. Oh. I just got on my lure. 
You sure you don't want my jig head? Huh? That's a big old jig head. Oh. I'm gonna stick with what I got. All right. The jig head is literally rusted and bent. I was in, I was in a hurry. In a hurry. I knew the snook were gonna be here. Yeah, but the bite stays on. We go back to the boat and actually get all of our gear. Yeah. Some Dr. Juice back. But when you got a when you got a bite, you gotta stick with what you got. Until it stops working. Yeah, so right in that right in that uh, black stuff right now. What it is is some little grass. It's some dead grass that's just sitting on the bottom because I've snagged some. So even though it's just dead grass sitting there, that's enough to, to hold some fish. Because out here, this is just a boring beach, like nothing, there's no structure, no rocks, no nothing, and just anything other than flat sand will usually be enough to... We got a bird, bird up here looking at bait. Yeah, that's about where that snook hit earlier too. But I think a lot of it does come down to the line diameter. Yeah. I've seen a, a big increase on even going from the braid, like a five pound braid versus a 10 pound braid. It's just less drag in the water. Cause fishing.